guys. Long time no see. I feel like I keep saying that, but um, yeah, I haven't posted a video in a while. I was a little delayed in this video because we were actually waiting on our kitchen sink, which still hasn't come yet, but I improvised. So today I'm going to be showing you how I redid our entire kitchen. Now this kitchen was original to the house. So it's the same kitchen from 1960. So I took our very outdated kitchen and I tried to modernize it on a budget. I don't know the total of what I spent. I'll put the total right here of what I spent to update it. Um, but I painted the cabinets, I painted the counters, I painted the range, I painted the oven, I painted the walls. There's a lot of paint involved. And I also um, ended up hanging a shelf that I DIY'd and I decorated that with some things from Hobby Lobby, so you'll see. So give me a thumbs up if you want more DIY videos. I absolutely love doing them. This one was a big one. It's probably gonna be a little bit longer, but I hope you guys enjoy it, and give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and let me know what you think. Okay, so the first thing I had to do was remove all of these old cabinets. It was really a struggle because they had painted over the hinges, so it took me forever, but I got the job done. Uh, but I wanted to show you what I'm working with because this is what I'm dealing with. All of the hinges are covered. Covered. Like, where's the screw? Can you see it? I can't. <laughs> so I have to scrape the paint off of here and somehow unscrew these old ass hinges. So, great. And look how shiny the cabinets are. Like, what is going on? It's just a mess, but we're gonna get there. You wanna see the most satisfying thing ever? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I have all the cabinets outside. This box, Amazon boxes come in handy. I'm going to spray it down with Simple Green. And this stuff is great, it's um, non-toxic. And I'm gonna put crud cutter on it with this after I've cleaned them and let that crud cutter sit for about 20 minutes and then wipe it off, let them dry for a minute and then I can go in with the primer. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys what one coat looks like. The kitchen is a tornado and it's driving me insane, but I just know that this is gonna be worth it. So, um, this is what it looks like, one coat of primer. I need to put another coat on and then go finish up the doors, the cabinet doors on the bottom that I have outside. Still have a pile over here of the top doors. I just don't have enough room for 19 cabinet doors in my garage, so doing the bottom half first. But I am gonna do like the second coat of primer on the top and hopefully, since that only has to dry for an hour, I'm going to do a coat of the linen white paint. All right, so this is the progress coming along. I have done two coats of primer and two coats of paint on all of this. And I just now have to put the doors on tomorrow and then paint the top doors. And John just took out the sink because we're getting a new white sink, so I'm super excited. So since I was painting both the backsplash and the countertops, I had to clean off everything that was on there, and then I had to clean the countertops with Simple Green CLR, which is like lime away, and then I had to sand them and clean them again. <laughs> Also, you should wear gloves when working with like CLR or Lime Away, but I don't have any, so I'm gonna use these double bags to do that, just so I don't burn the skin on my hands. And then I'm using one of these green scrubbers to clean it.
To apply this product, I just simply used a foam roller and I also used a foam brush to get into the edges. I did about two coats. All right, so that is one coat down. This is the same stuff that I used on my tub and tile and I love it. It just holds up really well. So I'll be doing another coat. Hopefully I'll only need two coats. I did it on the windowsill as well. Uh, but you do want to keep your windows open and a fan going and use a respirator when using this product. It's very fumey. So I just took my respirator off and I can definitely smell it. So I'm gonna leave the room and let this dry and come back and do another coat in probably like an hour. All right, you guys, this is how it's coming along. So the bottom cabinets are done. All I need to do now is buy some sort of sealer on the white cabinets. I just am nervous to do polyacrylic. I heard it can turn yellow if there's a lot of sunlight and there actually is a lot of sunlight in this room. So I'm gonna look into, I think they have floral lacquer by Annie Sloan that does not yellow. So I'm gonna probably end up putting that over the cabinet so they don't get dirty um, and are easily cleanable. But this is how the tile is coming out. I painted all this tile yesterday, as you guys saw, and it looks great in my opinion. Um, I know right now this probably looks really weird because it always looks weird before it looks way better. Um, up here, I'm gonna paint that all white. I bought a w piece of wood, which I am going to stain. Uh, it's super easy, you just rub the stain on with like a towel and let it dry. Okay, so John hung up the light. Absolutely love it. Um, now I just wiped the counters down with this simple green. Um, I'm going to now sand the counters lightly with a 120 grit sandpaper, and then I'm going to wipe it down with a bleach and water solution before I get to painting. The product that I use for the countertops is called Rust-Oleum Countertop Coating. This was like $23. It was so cheap and it came out absolutely amazing. It has very mixed reviews, but I just did two coats on my counter and it came out great. You just have to wait three days before you put anything on it. So this is the counter the next morning. I absolutely love how it came out. I think it looks amazing. And there was an area over here. There was an area over here where one was a little higher than the other. And it's hardly noticeable uh, because I used some wood filler and then sanded, I mean painted over it. And you can tell, but it's not that noticeable. So um, I absolutely love this. Can't put anything on it for at least three days. So in the meantime, I'll just admire how nice that looks. All right. So I'm going to be painting my windows black. So I will show you some YouTube magic here. So after lots of deliberation, I decided I need to paint this because it just looks gross. I can't get this off. It's like fingerprints or whatever. It's very old. This is original to the house, but I love the oven. Um, it actually doesn't really work that well, but it like overheats, but um, I really like the look of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to paint it with a high heat paint from Rust-Oleum and I'm going to paint it black so that it kind of matches all the knobs and stuff. Uh, we are eventually going to replace it, but um, it's just kind of ugly with the white now. So I'm going to take that off and paint that. So for a temporary solution to our sink, I ended up spray painting it with Rust-Oleum's Appliance Epoxy. Uh, they did have a tub and tile spray paint, but it had really bad reviews, so I ended up just using this one because other people seem to say it worked on sinks. So I am going to be using this, but keep in mind this is not long term for us. 
And for the oven, I used the Rust-Oleum High Heat uh, Barbecue Black on the oven. And I actually did end up using it on my range in my kitchen as well. Honestly, Rust-Oleum, you should probably sponsor me at this point. <laughs> I think I've used every single product of yours in this video. So that just happened. I just kicked over the entire can of that black paint. And yeah, that's freaking awesome. But um, I did a coat on this and I have enough to do another coat. So I think that will be plenty. Um, and then there's some splatter on the sink. I couldn't really avoid that when I was spraying, but I'm hoping since it's gonna be opaque white, you won't see the splatter, but I guess we'll have to see. The oven paint came out great though. I'm also going to repaint this range because I'm painting the old oven. Look, I don't even know why there's like insulation in there. It doesn't seem safe, but whatever. So these are the industrial brackets that I purchased at Home Depot. They were about $8 a piece and I got three of them. So it ended up being a pretty cheap solution to have a nice decor accent in the kitchen. Here I'm just making sure that the board would fit where my marks were before screwing them into the wall. So here I'm just styling the shelf. I got all of the decor at Hobby Lobby and I actually bought some stuff that was a little too tall by accident. So I just kind of, you know, finagled it and made it work. So I really wanted a place in my kitchen to hang some dish towels so I can dry my hands after doing dishes and I ended up buying a bar off of Amazon. It's got that industrial vibe and here I'm just measuring out the middle so I can center it. I also purchased these really cute dish towels from Hobby Lobby. So this is what our kitchen looked like before. This is what it looks like now. Okay, so over here I sort of did a DIY breakfast bar. I just got um, a piece of wood from Home Depot and then I got these little flanges off of Amazon and then I got a middle bar from Home Depot. I didn't decide to paint that one because it does kind of match the dishwasher. Um, so I could paint that in the future black, but I just left it how it is, but it's nice. It's a little breakfast bar in front of the window. I didn't really show how to do that in this video because it's kind of like a specific DIY. So that's what I did over here and got two stools off of Amazon. And then over here, I obviously painted all the cabinets white. I think they came out fantastic. I used um, linen white chalk paint from Rust-Oleum and it actually turned out so awesome. I also painted the counters and I also painted both of the windows with exterior black paint. I'll put all the links for the products I used down below in the description. That's from Amazon. That was $90. Um, the sink, I wasn't planning on using the sink, but we were supposed to get one from Lowe's and it's taking like a month for them to ship. So 
I ended up putting appliance epoxy on the sink and it actually didn't come out too bad. Um, so it's a good temporary solution to our problem. And then this is the tile backsplash. I actually think it came out great. Still has a little shine to it. Um, looks awesome. And then I just kept my wine and my wine glasses over here. And then up here is the shelf. And this is the painted range. Don't mind the mess, but there's a little bit of a mess right there. Um, and then I also painted the oven, which I think it actually goes very well with the rest of the kitchen black. So I love the way that came out. Um, next time I will be probably doing my floors in the next video. I'm going to be doing peel and stick flooring. So that will probably be next week's video. I just didn't have enough time to jam it all into this video, but this is the result and I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed this and got some inspiration if you were thinking of doing something similar, but I absolutely love it. Okay, so that is the video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your favorite part down below and I will see you in my next video.